After completing a 10 legacy challenge, I felt like it was important to celebrate this milestone as a simmer with you. I feel like most simmers sort of played with a legacy save at one point, but I know that a lot of people have trouble finishing a 10 legacy gameplay. I felt like this before too. I've been playing The Sims 4 since 2020 and I played with many families here and there and you know my channel is proof. <laughs> for real, okay? But for some reason though, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, I was able to stick with this one one family and play with their lives for 10 generations all right so i hope this video inspires you to try to play a 10 legacy you know gameplay yourself and see how far you go even if it's not 10 don't pressure yourself five is better than never trying kind of thing right for those of you who don't know me my name is sasha and i make sims for content welcome to the channel what is a legacy? And so by the definition on Merriam-Webster, a legacy is something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor from the past. But what does this mean in The Sims 4? According to an article by Kira Mills from GG, R-E-C-O-N, that's the website's name, don't know how to read that, is it Grecon? Don't know. But anyway, the Sims 4 Legacy Challenge involves playing through 10 generations of a family and building wealth of the family from the scratch in a similar way to the Rags to Riches Challenge. So if you've never heard of the Rags to Riches, basically the Sim starts it with nothing and I think their goal is a million simoleons. I'm not sure I haven't played the Rags to Riches. I know you're probably like, crawl, oh, spill the beans, tell me the secret. Okay, I got you. I'll tell you. Number one, it's pretty obvious, but find a legacy challenge that you like. So when I first heard of a legacy, I really didn't even know what it was, right? But I thought it was going to be boring once I learned about it. And then I found out about the Nightmare Legacy Challenge, and I was really attracted to this legacy. Long story short, this legacy is a 10 generational legacy gameplay. What you do is you complete two skills and max it out and you have to complete the career to level 10 plus the aspiration and make that all into a short lifespan legacy challenge that's why it's called a nightmare because it's a hot mess things be going by way too quick for your comfort but that was the challenge and i liked it for some reason for me the quote while i keep playing this 10 generation is oh my god the nightmare legacy is a nightmare for real <laughs> that's all the time i say i actually have probably have a video titled that because i did three videos on my legacy anyway i personally felt this legacy didn't have much rules as other legacy challenges you know some legacy challenges require you to have specific traits specific careers specific aspiration to complete like a gen or something this legacy challenge gave me freedom and i liked that a lot so for every gen, I gave myself mental notes of what I thought The Sims life would be, what kind of goals they had in their life, and doing this made it fun and fresh for me. And like honestly, it kind of became addicting to just want to see their stories through, even if I took major breaks, I'll be honest with y'all, but I'm gonna talk to y'all about that as the points go down. So this is by the way 10 legacies, I thought 10 points would be fun, so yeah, let's go to point number two be flexible yes following the legacy rules are what makes it fun and a challenge of course but if you never completed a 10 generation legacy maybe you need to be a little more flexible in some areas because at this point the goal is trying to get to gen 11 aka gen 10's babies okay <laughs> number three don't be too hard on yourself if you use ui cheats mod or any cheats for that matter I mean, it's, I know you may be like, oh my God, I didn't want to cheat, but it's not that deep. I promise down the line, it's not that deep. Okay. Like you're not doing some college exam. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where you're going to get expelled from playing the Sims. No, don't be too harsh to yourself. Don't judge yourself. Okay. Please. Like, please. Like, I know that like from personal experience, like I'd I, like oh, gen one to gen three, there was still some guilt if I pressed something from a cheat you know so i understand but like don't be too hard like as the gens go by child you might accidentally cheat a little more than you should <laughs> but i'm not recommending the cheat i'm just saying if you had to and you just you needed that to like complete a gen example like i heard some careers are a little glitchy to go up like i heard the food critic career and i think well like some active career i forgot it there's actual like 
for some reason especially because it's a short lifespan challenge they can't go up a level and if you know like the bar is at the end of excellent you know like if you play the game you know what i'm talking about and you've completed the promotional task you could keep completing the daily tasks then you might have to be the boss to promote your sim i i know it feels like a little cheaty but again sometimes the game's a little buggy in some areas you don't know what could be broken and if you know you're playing it right then don't be too harsh on yourself and judge yourself for having to you know complete this task or even aspiration i heard some aspirations they don't click it for you right click it with ui cheat mod if they're not allowing you and you did it more than once i'm just saying maybe you need to do a little google search but you don't have to if you know you know you know what i'm saying <laughs> number four take breaks between your generations okay because the death of the air can be a lot and i swear oh child i'm telling y'all it could be a lot like i am just an emotional like sometimes person like i'm not gonna lie like there are times my feelings can be involved in my save and you know i'm, I'm not gonna lie i'm gonna be honest with y'all and you guys can know like if you watch my let's plays you know sometimes i feel like i'm almost about to cry while i'm recording because i'm just like so in the feels when i'm playing you know so you know this advice is definitely applied to me too so yeah the death of your heir can truly be sad and so recently i've been trying to like think of a way to say the death in sims 4 like obviously i know to death please don't think that and it may feel like a little corny when i describe it or childish but it doesn't matter i want to say it to you maybe somebody who's out there like me will see it the same so i kind of say oh the sim is gonna go into their ghost form i've noticed that i've started to say it like that and i noticed that's how i started to mentally think it because especially like when you have pets in short lifespan and they die and i'm not gonna lie y'all i don't know if you know but the music don't do like my heart like i almost want to cry <laughs> every time and i'm sorry i'm only laughing because i'm nervous when i say like, you know the beat sound i'm just like god i sound so silly you know saying the sound effect and i probably doesn't sound like that but anyway y'all in all seriousness i swear it's hard like and you know i don't by the way for fun fact for pet sims i don't recommend you to destroy their urns let them come back as a ghost like maybe get a mod that doesn't allow sims to possess stuff but like they could still be part of the family i heard you can even add ghost sims to the household but i don't do that but i do welcome them back in i remember especially in gen 4 there was just a lot of like i remember just like animals and stuff because i think it was the lot trait that had like cat welcome cat and welcome dog or something yeah but all this to say is i just want you to understand like i really do feel emotions like especially when i first started playing the game i hated seeing that blue color for sad my god and and oh my god y'all i didn't know about ui cheats mod then but if i did i would always remove those moodlets because they used to make me so uncomfortable seeing my sims sad like i would do everything in my power like i was so vanilla <laughs> i did everything talk in the mirror for hours you know oh my god you hungry let's go back <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean if you play the game you know what i'm saying so yeah i'm telling you even if your air isn't necessarily the best kind of sim i still would give myself time off i would leave whether it was a week a month you know what i'm saying days even maybe it's like i could handle it and go back in because i'm like so invested to see the next air's life because i'm like excited i did all the lots and stuff or whatever which i'm gonna talk about in for future points so number five try to add an a an added layer now i've kind of talked about this in the point one but now you get to know what this means so here's one right i never really played with masculine sims when i first started the challenge like as like the main dude like oh his wife is going to be like almost a side character for me like i never have that it's like all these dudes that are all side characters in my in my especially stories and stuff i know you're looking at you know maybe a recent subscriber and say girl aren't you the girl who has college years and high school years following twin brothers stories and stuff i know but because of that i'm able to bring these experiences of personal or even somewhat shared gameplay um, with y'all as an experience so i chose to do these like mental like challenges for myself of things in the game that i could do and keep trying to learn and stuff like that i don't know if the point comes across i hope you understand what i mean by that so another thing that i did was for the first six generations i had each family like the heirs be vegetarians now it wasn't even the trait it was just kind of like at this point i was so used to not pressing you know what i'm saying f meat plates and stuff like that you know i did have some sims who do roll the trait obviously but i was like 
like oh this is gonna be their thing the vegetarian legacy another thing that's important i would say is to look at your sims traits like you know when the heir has a child and you're looking at all the kids and you're like which one is gonna be the one i'm gonna follow their life and their story so i would say look at what they're doing look at how they're acting look what traits they have look what aspiration you gave them as a child are you working with it kind of sometimes like well you know who's the one you're like oh my god like you know you just felt in your heart that's like the right sim and, you know and then you see their characteristics and you're just like oh i see this career for you so example like gen 2 he had the bookworm trait and the gloomy trait and i made him a tragic novelist like he would write about tragedies and stuff like that like it just really sad stories that could make sims cry in my mind you know he would write these books he <laughs> yes i really i didn't play i don't know why i did that but yes i did that so that's what i think you should totally do that just give yourself some time of course you know because i know it's short lifespan but sometimes when you're playing the game, it feels like a couple of hours and stuff while you're playing this short lifespan. So during that time, the story could come to you. Just give yourself that time, that grace, because it will. And I believe in you. Now the next point for point number six, move your sim out to another world for each gen, okay? Explore things in the game you weren't able to do. Now every single gen i'm not even gonna play i moved the sim to another world okay like i got to fully try different careers in the sims because of it so i tried the acting career the cop career comedy career cooking career the lifeguard the villain the writing and like so much more okay i've tried these careers thanks to exploring and playing this generational gameplay i moved all my sims to different worlds right and no air lived in the same world like during their young adult adult you know what i'm saying those ages because i really wanted to commit to exploring the game and that's how like if you notice if you follow me on twitter i'll talk about how i found things in the game or details and stuff like that like i find some really fun stuff and when i play like, i don't know how to describe it, but like it's so fun and, and this is my maybe personal enjoyment of just finding cool stuff because i know a lot of um simmers we talk about how maybe the sims 4 isn't as detailed as previous games but there are details and i feel like sims 4 details should still receive uh some love too because why not like you're playing the Game. why disregard the details when you could find them yourself and you have a perfect excuse 10 generational gameplay so i'm gonna take y'all a tour of the save file i have and let's go see who's living in the first gen home oh my god okay so i want to show y'all i was in a builder so don't be judging me okay and i think at the time i probably didn't like I, you know because you know the sim is poor right because it starts off like i think he had only 1800 simoleons that's the rule i'll try to find the blog post of the challenge but i just want to show y'all how the struggle they was living in and yeah because you know it's called nightmares so i thought <laughs> don't judge me don't judge me okay <laughs> but yeah that is a home okay this is what they could afford this is humble beginnings okay and yes okay the pool flow iconic okay the pool slide oh you know he was working on the logic skill <laughs> I just showed y'all the home that they used to live in so i used to i just have lots like you know the regular in-game stuff i was again a newbie so i think a restaurant was important oh this one's after the tiana um you know princess and the frog tiana's palace and then here's a, a bar that i got and you know another one was a park and stuff so yeah i just added a bunch of random stuff again it wasn't like completely renovated lots of stuff like but you might see something like that a little more down the line so gen one lived in oasis springs gen two lived in mount Komarevi. so let's go to Mount Komarevi just so y'all could see again so yeah Mount Komarevi is revamped like you could see like downtown Tokyo Tokyo apartment this one I took this to the Yuki Bear safe file and you know candy and Yuki Bear so you know again I told y'all I get to explore stuff here and bring it to a let's play current household videos on my channel um yeah I got made cafe like again commit to like just making things fun Tokyo Wanabe uh sushi cup Oyashiru, uh, Tokyo Alley restaurant. Um, yeah, I was at the time again because I knew that like I wanted the vibe to give off Tokyo. And again, I was playing this around what 2021. So I was trying to get like yeah stuff like this. Like see, look izakaya. I always get an izakaya when I go to Mount, have a myself like for Mount Komarevi. Like 100 like a cinema, coffee shop, a Tokyo nightclub. I just search stuff like that. Like you know to make it fun. The onsen. Um, I think this is uh just the lot that you rent. But yeah. So I literally, like I said, have a Starbucks. Uh, it's a gaming cafe. Like I don't even know if I did all. I went to all these places, but I gave my sim the choice for them to go to those places. Uh, even I think this one was part of the Yuki Bear save file. Like fun fact, if you've been on my channel for a long time, 
yeah so and i'm sure some of these lots came to other gameplays but like yeah i'm telling you i really had fun and then let's go to gen 3 gen 3 will live in sian my shuno so for San my shuno i just added this lot i believe japanese hanami Kar karaoke happy new year restaurant this lot is so pretty i loved it uh i think this is a regular starlight i don't think it was a remixed version this one yeah the bowling i felt like again this fa this gen 3 was about having a lot of kids and it was more family so i definitely had stuff like that and then just old salt house restaurant yeah so i just had stuff like that and then of course the first part of it was a strip club um you know partying because the mom you know she was single she met her um baby daddy like through partying and stuff and she was just this young girl lost her parents moved away kind of thing you know so that was gen 3 right gen 4 lived in sulani so sulani i think just for memories i feel is such a wave of nostalgia when i come here like and i just love that i committed into because um my sim was into uh animals and so i just committed into ha it having a vet clinic and it just has such sulani vibes like y'all if you ever just like have like i said traits and stuff just really commit to it. you might be surprised with how much you love it and then yes uh she was her aspiration was inner peace so i got her a spa definitely and i got lots like sulani like oh by the way i just want to let y'all know the more i started to play like i said you could tell now it's more like really looking cute right the more i got to understand how to search stuff through the gallery so all i do is i do a very basic search i'll search something like look like sulani if you notice the stuff says sulani on it probably and stuff like that or maybe um you know i'll just look for a lot trait and then i'm i could tell that it's a sulani bill look like sulani beach club this, this was fun i remember i took the family they were dancing have fun oh I'm, again gen 4 is one of my favorite gens for that reason like i could i feel like just like oh like i just feel so like it's sentimental for me you know but anyway let's go to gen 5 gen 5 lived in brindle to bay and brindle to bay the sim is like an artist so i had like an uh, art center here um i had like a seafood shack uh you know brindle to bay restaurants like stuff like that like you know seafood and she's vegetarian but still um she was ordering vegetarian stuff from the menu but still like you know i committed to it you know i had a cafe um you know the vet clinic obviously because this gen is about you know like there is you know her mom lived animals she probably had a pet you know and there's a park for the kids you know uh yeah so i wanted something like that for um my my gens and stuff so so this is gen 6 and how it looks like this for the save i have a couple of restaurants you know give it some you know bougie vip vibes and you know of course the studio uh you know where you can do have the award ceremonies i i changed that up and then there's just some homes and then you know my girl was here and she ends up leveling up to go here this is like an old like save of like copied basically just to show y'all quickly how this looks gen 7 was evergreen harbor now i'm not sure if evergreen harbor looks oh yes okay if y'all remember my sim ada from the perfect life this is where she lived this is gen 7 and if y'all saw look evergreen harbor diner you know uh the La aritzia I, I just found some stuff like that and yeah and then here's the wedding lot they got married oh like not married but like it was called renew their vows or something yeah so gen 8 was in willow creek i don't think i did a lot in willow creek but i do have yeah willow creek gym and spa willow creek restaurant willow creek nightclub willow creek Arch archive and then magnolia blossom renovation like y'all could tell like it's just very simple names like that's how i eventually like i said learned to find the right stuff for me so yeah gen 9 was in windenburg and this is nice so windenburg was pretty just like from memory um yeah see so look back the real remodel so i just find stuff even like that the ea people named like back the real and i'm just like i want something like of that but like re, re remixed re renovated la, 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 you know so yeah definitely disco the pan europa um harbor quarter nightclub like stuff like that like look south square so it's like the areas also i, I might just find a restaurant i'm like you know i'll place a restaurant there i might place a library there i might place this there you know what i'm saying so yeah it's like all remixed stuff and recently i added this one this is for gen from gen 10 because gen this is gen 9 right gen 10 i decided to have her wedding back home so yeah you get to have 
fun stuff like that so gen 10 is in copperdale and this sim is a comedian so i have a comedy club here so like there and it's parks you know this is going to be more about family gameplay uh look copperdale grill restaurants i have the diner because you know this is from high school years so see high school years is teaching me something and i was like oh i want to bring that back if you ever watch that series that episode the red lighting i just think about that like that's just so, so pretty this lot creator synapsed okay i actually think that though i'm hoping one day they do an update where they could tell you who created the lot by like you know what i'm saying through that name part up there but yeah i have a thrifty location and stuff like that but yeah i thought that this um hopefully y'all could understand and get inspiration by just viewing my save if you're wondering i am using a map override which probably makes me like love my you know the game and how it looks like even more 0.7 is jumping off of 0.6 treat every new gen like it's a new save go all out by giving your sim the proper life so now y'all already saw that i'm in copper deal you're seeing it right and you know that my sim has a club she has a nightclub that her and her man could go uh there's restaurants because she has like i think three kids three dogs um if this is a family if you're curious this is them um yeah i have restaurants of course because again everybody's gonna grow up there it's about family like i'm trying to like hold hold it out at like you know make the circle complete at gen 10 you know with a proper very adorable family gameplay so yeah commit to creating these lots i know i talked about talked about it in gen 0.6 but this was 0.72 okay i stole my own points <laughs> but yeah i just wanted you to understand that it's all about making it fun you know like i said gen 5 had an art gallery in her area and she was an artist living out there she was a painter i think she was doing the painting and aspiration like all out painting you know so commit to it like literally when you change i know it takes a bit of time to find the right lot but just give yourself a day two days and watch yourself enjoying the game it's like your own personal save file like now look at me i kind of have my own save file indirectly i didn't mean to but i'm just having fun <laughs> so number eight is take your time there is no time where you're chasing especially if it's your first legacy please don't burn yourself out like for real y'all like just enjoy it enjoy the gameplay you know this is sort of like somewhat of a unique experience of gameplay for you you know especially like as the generations go by like you're gonna start to feel sentimental towards it and i'm sure you probably heard it from me even when i talk about gen 4 and sulani and just how it makes me feel can you imagine how it makes you feel when you start to do that for your own gameplay like what will you experience i don't know but i'd love if we could talk about it one day so yeah that's point eight and then point nine is not every one of your heirs is a good sim okay i know it's a little controversial but look some sims are trifling and you know it you know it. you've played the game you've seen some trifling sims okay so if they randomize with a bad trait run with it okay because i've used the randomizer i think that was the rules i continuously use the randomizer i never felt like hmm, let me pick your trait maybe if they weren't an heir 100 percent, but other than that i was randomizing now if you want to cheat that you could but that was just one random thing that i was committing to <laughs> if they randomize with a bad trait run with it but i do want to say though sidebar i do feel like there might have been some times where i was randomizing and i might have done like one two three if i don't like what one was you know <laughs> i'm gonna be real but yeah of course you could do that too it's still the randomizer i mean you didn't do it like 500 times you know to find the right trait so it's not that deep but i just wanted to like y'all i'm gonna be honest okay anyway so yeah i wanted to say though like honestly if they randomize with a bad trait just run with it because you're gonna have fun you're gonna ha commit to the bad assessory you know what i'm saying so yeah <laughs> what makes a legacy fun is their randomness okay but like also if your sim is super evil and just makes you as a person uncomfortable which i've been there when sims have done some effed up stuff and of course like maybe i kind of helped the gameplay but like after the fact i'm just like oh like who the f are you like and it really made me uncomfortable i would try to see if i could change my sim for the better or i'll just pray that this gen is over so that i could just make the next gen all cutesy and family gameplay let last point but certainly not the least point number 10 now this is gonna be a little out of pocket for me to say this to you but commit to this short lifespan if you're playing the nightmare legacy like me now i know you might feel like time is not on your side it's running away or something but you can always tweak your sims kids age like i feel like that's kind of the only thing that i feel like that you might 
really annoy you is that toddlers age up like in a day or two days or whatever it feels so fast and um infants so you could cheat that if it really makes you uncomfortable but other than that you literally will have there's a rule called the potion of youth for your air and they can drink it and it resets their age uh back to day one so you don't have to worry about the time that being on your side now i know it gets a little sad sometimes that maybe their spouse don't drink it and their spouse is older than them and yeah but sometimes i might just a give the i might cheat the spouse age like a little three days behind or something that's point number 10 i'm telling you though the game's gonna be more fun once you commit to it because if you commit to the timeline you have it's gonna be more quicker for you to complete this legacy especially if it's a short lifespan like i said i will link you the nightmare legacy i just wanted to show y'all a quick look at my heirs i will be having part two coming out and you're gonna see more of their stories and photos of their lives and stuff like that but yeah this is gen one his name is nico way this is gen two his name is rico way this is gen three eris way this is gen four tia way this is Gen 5, Sprinkles Way. And yes, the family keeps the same last name for all 10 generations. I don't believe in my Sim changing their last name. I don't care if they marry whoever. The Sim they marry is going to be the Sim that changes their last name. This is Gen 6, Violet Way. This is Gen 7, Shannon Way. This is Gen 8, Emma Way. This is Gen 9, Aria Way. Of course, last but never the least, the youngest of the gens, Aliana Way. Well, there you have it. I gave you 10 tips for you to complete your own legacy challenge. Whatever it is, I am sending positive energy your way. I hope you're able to complete the legacy. And I know some points may come off like it's contradicting itself, but you know when you're playing and you're in the moment, there's going to be times you have to make these contradictory type of decisions. So please don't be too hard on yourself. Enjoy the game. That's basically the number one thing to always remember. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll meet you for part two where I tell you all the tea on my legacy see sims and their life story so yeah see you then take care